Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. Um, I'm just going to start with some uh, good information. Uh, we would love to get some questions during the session, so please write them in the chat and uh, we will answer them by the end of the webinar this time. Um, hopefully, we get lots of questions mm -hmm. and we have time to answer everything. Um, and also, uh, we will be recording this webinar and we'll send it to everyone afterwards. So just keep your eyes open tomorrow um, if you want to watch it again or maybe share it with a colleague or so. So um, before we get into why SMS is such an important channel uh, to put in your marketing mix, uh, maybe we should introduce ourselves. So. I'm going to start with you, Martina. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Martina, and I work as a CRM manager at uh, Beyond Board. We're super happy to have you here. Thank it's you. going to be really fun mm -hmm. to hear how, how you work um, mm -hmm. with text messages. Um, I'm Sophie, for everyone who's listening. I'm working at Voyado as a customer marketing manager. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, let's just get started. Um, we are here to hear about how you work with text messages at Beyond Boy um, and how um, SMS got, uh, got to be one of your most important channels. But besides from having Martina here, um, we have a sponsor for this webinar. Um, and who would be a better fit than the company that works super focused uh, with uh, mobile messaging? And that's our partner, Cinch. So um, before jumping into your journey. Mm -hmm. um, Singe has provided us with some great numbers mm -hmm. uh, that I hope that every marketeer uh, will enjoy to hear uh, about. Uh, could be good uh, when working with text messages or considering to start working with text messages. So, um, some amazing numbers, but uh, text messages is the channel closest to customers in their everyday life. Um, and according to this, these specific numbers, uh, about 96% of uh, people who have a cell phone sends about 13 text messages every day. And as many as 74% of those have zero unread messages most of the time. And that should mean that SMS is a channel to count on if you want your customer's attention. Um, and that um, might be the reason that SMS is one of the top four uh, adopted uh, marketing channels. Um, so uh, with that said, 52% of marketers, marketeers say that they use text messages in marketing uh, since they can reach a large audience. Um, and that's not the only reason, of course. Um, 45% of marketers like SMS marketing because it often brings like good customer engagement and it's an easy and fast channel to um, communicate and send important information through. Um, but it, working with marketing is not about what marketeers like. It's about the customers and the recipients. Um, and according to the numbers presented here, 75% uh, of com uh, consumers say that they only want to get messages about like shipment, uh, tracking, order and confirmation information, and alerts. Uh, whilst 35% of consumers say that they like um, receiving marketing text messages. Like I, I, I guess uh, there's a thin line between <laughs> these two. And uh, do you recognize yourself yeah. in this? Yeah, I would say yes. Yeah. Um, but it depends on how they perceive the communication. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if they would say that the marketing message is uh, um, not for them, like, for example, when we send um, coupons, they mm -hmm. think it's not um, a marketing message. They think it's for them. So I guess yeah. it's a thin line. Of, yeah. Yeah. What, what is what? exactly? And I would say like 35 percent might sound like a low number, um, but I guess it all comes down to. Like what you just said, yeah. uh, how you use text messages in your marketing and uh, who you decide to send them to. Um, and we're going to hear more about that from you. But uh, like, hopefully uh, these examples here uh, can bring some clarity on when 
when to best use SMS. And we'll see if you agree mm -hmm. with everything. Mm -hmm. But we have the urgent kind of messaging. Uh, I would say that this is kind of the optimal way to use SMS uh, when you want to create some kind of FOMO, but still keep it personal. It could be flash sales or reward check reminders. Or maybe if you want to communicate more exclusive and personalized offers, such as invitations, for example. Um, I, I think uh, like customers tend to engage at a higher rate in uh, these kind of text messages. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for like reinforcing communication, uh, where you might want to remind your customers about a specific deal uh, or when you want to create a more like intimate uh, experience uh, with truly relevant communication. Um, but instead of me standing here talking about like how and why you should work with text messages, I, uh, I think everyone else <laughs> wants to hear you talk about yes. the Unforest uh, implementation and usage. Yes. Um, so, yes. Um... We, we, we saw, everyone saw yeah. some amazing results in the invitation. Yeah. Uh, and I think um, we're a bit curious um, to hear like how Beyond Boy is working and even your journey at Beyond Boy. Mm. So maybe we should start with you. Yes, um, certainly. I started at Beyond Boy uh, 2016 as a CRM manager, but mm. we sort of quickly concluded that we needed to upgrade our CRM landscape. So I actually started working quite soon as an econ project manager. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been implementing a lot of different systems. Um, and I'm not going to go into that, but one of those were mm -hmm. Yado. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, and it's uh, when I got back from my maternity leave in January, I get, got back to the position as CRM manager at Bjornborg, so sort of back to where I started. Mm -hmm. And um, now we have, um, like, I'm going to talk about the SMS. This is something that's been a little bit um, an internal joke that I've <laughs> always considered is an important channel. So that's the only thing I've been sort of hands on working with also as the time as I was a project manager. Mm. So. It's kind of your <laughs> other baby then. Yeah, I, guess. I would say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay, but let's let's hear... Yes, about your yes. journey. Um, first of all, I would uh, like to make a metaphor <laughs> of sending SMS and walking on a thin line above the clouds. Um, and the only thing you don't want to do is fall. And uh, imagine walking too fast, bombarding your customer with a flood of messages. It's like trying to sprint on a thin line <laughs> and risking overwhelming your customer and making them feel bombarded. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you walk too slowly, mm. then you're hesitating and potentially missing out on opportunities on engaging and connect with your audience. So <laughs> with that metaphor, let me try to guide you on Jan Boris' journey of learning how to increase conversion rate and the revenue with the SMS channel. Um, so basically, um, what data do you have to work with? Uh, how many contacts do you have with mobile marketing permission? Um, I would say that you should look on the data and see what uh, segments you can create from, from that data. Um, and if you don't barely have any mobile numbers, you should instead make a plan on how to ask customer for the mobile number uh, or also enroll uh, new phone numbers from new recruits. Um, at uh, Björn Borg, we have a SMS segment for uh, for our members, their tier levels, like gender and market, um, what particular store they belong to, if it's an online customer or retail customer, engaged customer versus non-engaged customers. So the list goes on. Um, and uh, now when you have this segment, let's, let's try to test what works on them. And at the board, we have done a lot of testing. Um, to give you some example, we have made big send outs uh, with the same message to everyone and very narrow segments with on point messages. And we have tests with local languages versus English, uh, gender, time and day, frequency, personal versus non-personal messages. Um, and also here the list, uh, the list goes on. 
Um, and since the testing don't give you all the answer, we have complemented it with asking our customer on how they would like to use the SMS channel. Um, and the questions involve what information and content they would like to receive, in what language and how often. And the survey have, have been sent to our in-store customers and also ad hoc to our online SMS subscribers. Um, so now you've done the segments, the testing, the service. Uh, it would be wise to sort of analyze the result uh, and what gives you the best value for your business. Um, for, for our part, we can uh, conclude that the segments, they should not be too big or too narrow. Um, and we have things uh, for, for all the testing that we don't find. We think that we have found the sweet spot for that. Um, for example, when you make bigger sendouts or when we have done bigger sendouts during a certain amount of time, then we can see that the conversion rate is pretty good in the beginning, but after a while it's declining. So that's why we have seen that we need to sort of be more relevant and personal and try to have more narrow segments. Um, and But even if we make a big send out to our whole database, we try to sort of do the um, segmentation based on, on different aspects. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, the service that we have gotten answers to is that the customer seems to have, the, they think that the mobile is more private than, for example, emailing. Yeah. Uh, so that's why we believe the conversion rate is much uh, higher when communicating in the local language. So, for example, Finland, um, sending SMS to them versus on Finnish, we mm -hmm. have seen a huge difference in, in the conversion rate. Um, much bigger uh, impact than we can see on more uh, emailing. Um, yeah, and also bigger impact when communicating our member benefits, mm -hmm. as I said in the starting, uh, yeah. in the law of the program uh, has given very nice results. It's almost like they're demanding us to send those. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I'm mm -hmm. curious about like uh, the local mark uh, languages uh, part because that that seems to be like super important for specific markets but um which markets uh, do you send a text messages to yes um so for for the local languages we send mm. it to swedish market the netherlands belgium uh, finland and also the uk mm. um but we also have a global list uh, but for those we send it in english yeah. yes and that's the countries you have local stores in. Yeah, exactly. That's where we have local stores. In UK, we, we used to have a store. We don't have it anymore, but we're still sending those to the UK market. Yeah. That's, yes. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. But continue, mm -hmm. like the loyalty program. And yes. <laughs> well, in, uh, in conclusion, like uh, testing different approaches before anything else have at least helped us to know what KPIs to set up and what strategy to follow. Uh, so not to reveal the whole strategy, but one key uh, to our result is to be as relevant and personal as possible. So when we try to segment, uh, we make it feel like super per like more personals, personal. <laughs> and um, also another strategy is the customer that have enrolled in a physical store uh, also always get communication from from that store. And our store often, like our in-store person, personal working there, they all, all like they receive a lot of feedback that they believe the actual store have sent the message. And they go into the store and say, hi, hi I got a message from you. And I believe I have a coupon here, for example. That's perfect. <clears throat> yeah. That's a good result. <laughs> yeah, this is very nice. And it also says yeah. in, in this uh, text message on the screen, because mm -hmm. it's in Swedish, like um, it it it's finished by Björnborg at Sturegeldian, which is yeah. a local store in here in Stockholm. Exactly. Mm. So that's uh, the strategy is to they are connected to that store and they should receive the communication from that store. So that's how we we work with that. Um, and um, now when you have the strategy and the KPIs ready, um, it's time to set up a plan, <laughs> like a send up plan. Uh, we have uh, made a plan that follow our commercial can calendar with collection, sales, and activities in the loyalty program. Um, we have a plan for what message to deliver and to what segment. Um, and to do this um, planning, it's also easier to to say, see what your budget if you're following your budget. 
Uh, and in regards to the SMS automation that mm. we have set up in Voyado, um, we have cho chosen only to use our in-store customers. Um, uh, for you who uses Voyado, we use current store to see their store belonging. Um, and since the members enroll with their phone numbers in store, we send uh, like welcome series, birthday presents, and coupon on SMS to these in-store mm. customers uh, with the automation. I think this this part is uh, super important because, like we all know, it's not a secret. Email is cheaper than sending an SMS. <laughs> <Exactly. message. laughs> um, but if, for Vian Boris' part, you've seen like great return on investment. Mm. So it turned out that it was like an official anyway. Mm. Um, but uh, I think you're mentioning a really good thing here because I think it might be like a bump in the road to just see like money flying away. Mm. But as soon as you set a plan and like mm. you set the budget, yeah, then you you know you're not gonna overspend. Exactly. And then you can just wait mm. on the results and like fine tune. Mm. So it's super important. Definitely. Um well um so now uh we we come you come a long way and it's time to relax and celebrate your achievements. But however, it's uh, super important to remember that the journey doesn't end here and uh, you need to follow up on your KPIs uh, to ensure that you're delivering on your goals and objectives. Uh, so if you need to tweak something to sort of maximize, uh, if you're not following, not uh, reaching a target, you need to see how you can mm -hmm. elaborate with that. So it's yes. an ongoing loop of testing and adjusting. Yes, I would say, definitely. Mm -hmm. And um, at the um, Board, we are super um, keen on following targets and uh, we're obsessed with uh, <laughs> with that. So definitely. That's good. It's yeah. a good start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. OK. Um, well, just a summary to my metaphor in the intro. Uh, so to find the right balance, yeah, I think you need to find that sweet spot where you provide valuable, timely, and personal messages uh, without crossing the line into annoyance. Um, so I hope you find our yarn useful, and hopefully you can try out some of these tips uh, to see what's right for your business. So we have some... Uh... Um, extra learnings. Here. Yes, okay. definitely. <laughs> um, well, first of all, the number one, find the right fit before setting strategy and KPIs. So, um, well, for us, it's been like discovering the ideal fit has been essential before setting the strategy and the KPIs. So uh, by exploring these different approaches, the testing and analyzing the result, it's been a good way of us for us to determine um, what works best for our mm. business and our goals. Um, yes. I, ha I have a question for you here. <laughs> I was thinking about like saving this one, but mm. um, regarding the testing, mm. like you, you've done it in, in so many ways, as mm. you've talked about, mm. uh, but th there's always like the importance of uh, also collecting phone numbers. Mm. I, I know that uh, lots of people haven't had that in their like registration flow. Mm. Uh, from before, but if they're interested in starting, mm -hmm. like, uh, have you tested ways to collect well phone numbers as well? Um, consent? Yeah, definitely. Um, for the uh, in store, we have um, that's how they sort of um, enroll in the in the loyalty program. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty easy in that yeah. way. Um, and um, for the online customer, we are actually redoing that uh, thing right now. So we will be uh, having more possibilities to sign up and enroll for uh, for SMS online. So mm. we're changing the API with the, with you. Mm. So um, that is coming hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yes. And uh, the number two, as I mentioned, uh, for us, it's the personalization has been the key for a conversion rate for SMS. Uh, since I sort of said this item is more personal than maybe emailing, that's how you should also communicate with customers. Um, and um, number three, like the segment should not be too big and not too narrow. Um, so you need to find that the, what's the right balance for you. Yeah. And and how how do you know when you found your sweet spot? You 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 need to track your 
uh, conversion and mm. or follow your KPIs um, that you have set up and see that they follow those. And um, so I, I would say that's the best way of knowing. And also looking at the opt out because mm. we could see when we were sending um, like big send outs, mm. uh, we can see the conversion rate is declining and the opt, uh, opt out is also increasing. And yes. that's not what you want to have. No, that's yeah. the opposite. Mm. <laughs> But yeah. uh, okay, so here's maybe a philosophical question. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, what is personalized <laughs> messaging? Yeah, that's like, super... What do you um, count mm -hmm. into uh, personalization? Well, it's a uh, it's a, a question rather of a preference for the customer. Mm -hmm. um, also, what they previously um, have shown interest in yeah. into our product, for example, but also being more like we know that the personalization can be many parts but uh, it can also be that we actually as i exa the example with the stores that they actually mm. are personal in that approach yeah. so we know you belong to the store we know you've been here before for example yeah so that is um, yeah it's a, it's a good question um but it's we try to sort of be as relevant as possible uh, in, in the way we can mm. that's, that's super good but um, I'm going to move on to, like, it's time for questions. Mm -hmm. We have some questions. I think we have, like, six questions this far, five or six questions. Mm -hmm. But uh, please um, push in questions in the chat. Uh, we would, would love to get some questions from uh, more people mm -hmm. listening. Okay. I think you've, you've already answered this question. Um, mm -hmm how you collect phone numbers. Mm -hmm. But that's, uh, like if, if I can add something there. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> we, we, we have lots of customers who's been like um, working really hard with collecting phone numbers since they don't have any phone numbers. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of ways to do it. And mm -hmm. maybe like incentivizing, giving your phone number uh, and that kind of stuff like mm -hmm. you do, uh, but that's mm -hmm. for the entire member program. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Just, just something to add. But you can Start also, asking. yeah, but also asking your customer. I mean, you have a lot of data on those. If you just try to make some kind of engagement for them, like we want to yeah. communicate and also be super transparent with what, what you want to say in that channel. Like, yeah. Um, so I think it's all about that. Mm. You know? Absolutely. Okay. So um, mm -hmm. here's one more for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So how does Beyond Bori work with like uh, recruiting and onboarding new members? Um, I'm gonna read it. For the seven percent of the registration rate um, uh, to become members looks fantastic. I guess that's from the invitation. Uh, from the <laughs> yeah, <interview>. yeah. <laughs> It's fun, you know that data otherwise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, we have a um, sort of um, we don't want to disturb our customers in the in the in the checkout. So mm -hmm. therefore, we have um, um, after they uh, sort of made the purchase, they can uh, get points for purchasing afterwards mm -hmm. and enrolling to the loyalty program and also receiving um, thousand points, so which is like fifty crowns, mm -hmm. as like five euro um, voucher. Um, and also, I think uh, we have a very loyal um, customer database. So I think it's also because of our brand, I would yeah. say. Yeah, it's 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 a big, well renovated brand. Yes. Okay. Um. Then let's see here. What would you say that your uh, would you say that your segmentation strategy differs a lot between emails and text messages? Yeah, definitely. Uh, as you mentioned, the frequency is not as high as uh, for emailing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have the strategy where we sort of have the, the in-store specific send outs to, um, to our um, consumers, also for the online customers, yeah. uh, as well as for the retail stores. Mm -hmm. you, you see, like, I'm going to throw in a question from okay. me here yeah. <laughs> uh, can you see if there's like a big difference between conversion rate in text messages and emails for the same kind of messages um like for those who don't have phone numbers too so for the ones we don't have phone numbers that we're sending emails to mm. if we see like it's, it's the um, like conversion rate or the uh, engagement i guess 
is, is there a difference there? Yeah, I would definitely say it's uh, um, we get more feedback on on the SMS, <laughs> uh, so to say, uh, than the email. Yeah. Um, so interesting. Yeah. So on um, pretty much the same path here. Mm. Text messages. Mm. Um, how do you work? Like, what automations do you include text messages in that gives uh, the best results? Mm. Um, so for the, I think I also mentioned that, but um, for the automation, we only use the um, in-store. Um, mm -hmm. um, so for example, birthday, like milestone in the loyalty program. Also, they welcome the mm -hmm. SMS when they have enrolled, so they know. Um, and the... Yeah, and also we're setting up a test uh, right now, actually, to have a reminder of their uh, the benefits when they yeah. haven't used it. So, uh, but we can see really nice result on on those um, like birthdays and milestones, and yeah, also for like coupon expiring. Yeah, yeah, reminders. <clears throat> yeah, people can sort of run into the store and like, yeah, I have a coupon, and this that expires. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> So definitely. What's your best tips to get the entire organization working together towards the same goals? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we are, uh, beyond board, we are obsessed with the following uh, targets and we have a framework uh, where um, like the whole company are super involved in. Uh, mm -hmm. So every Monday meeting, we go through that uh, um, uh, so we have this framework, it's sort of where do you want to go, where are we now, what should we do to get there, and how and why. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have the KPIs uh, connected to that. So we are um, super obsessed with following targets, and that is super fun. Actually. And it's like mm. cross <laughs> organizational or yeah yeah definitely yeah definitely we have uh, shared goals and between the different departments to sort of help each other mm -hmm. uh, so yeah so that's super, super nice, that's nice. Mm -hmm. um i haven't said this in the webinar yet but we're soon gonna release a, a customer case that we've done together with you mm -hmm. um and something i found very interesting when talking about like this specific part organizational and like breaking down silos is how uh, your support team works with the product team like, mm. i haven't really heard that mm. before mm. you want to tell us about that uh, yes uh, so um, uh, after our customer uh, have um, purchased online they receive um sort of um, questionnaire review of their products mm -hmm. and there we get a lot of feedbacks uh, for like they give star rating mm -hmm. basically and before we didn't do anything with it. it we just uh, sort of we had a review we published it online that's mm -hmm. basically what we did but we didn't sort of actually made actions based on that so what we changed in that process is that um the customer service they get this um sort of um, review and they see all the reviews mm. and if they see that there's a product that the people tend to have like difficulties for example maybe they want to uh, oversized mm -hmm. um, product and but they believe the product is not mm -hmm. then um, the customer service needs to take this further so they go to um, to see if we can change the text on the web or they can contact the, the designers and yeah. The, yeah so it's like a loop where we go through like or like the low star rating and we'll see if there's a pattern for yeah. the, for those so it, so we actually help uh, us become better um, through our customers. But like that, that sounds amazing for the entire experience of mm -hmm. being a customer. Like you're being taken seriously. Your feedback is included in even product development. Mm -hmm. But uh, what kind of results have you seen since you started working like this? Uh, for for those. Uh, we had either for <laughs> the customers or for the young body. <laughs> no, but in that particular, we, we haven't really seen the result for that yet uh, it's a yeah so uh, hopefully we'll see it soon but mm -hmm. uh, since um, we've started with that uh, for um, six months ago I think we mm -hmm. have to wait long longer until we see yeah. the results we're <laughs> starting to analyze it yes exactly mm -hmm. it all comes down mm -hmm. to the same strategy yeah, yeah, yeah definitely you. maybe <laughs> yeah yeah okay um 
we don't have any more questions uh, as of right now. So less chance to send in questions. Otherwise, I think we're gonna uh, wrap it say up. thank you um, for attending today. Um, super happy uh, to do this together with you and also to uh, to see uh, how well Bjorn Bo is doing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and also glad to hear that you love us. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. The fun yeah. channel to <laughs> yeah. work with. It okay. is actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um before saying goodbye, um just a reminder, we will send the recording afterwards if you want to share it with someone else. Thank you uh for attending today. Bye bye. Have a great <laughs> uh, week. Mm -hmm. Yes.